Alright guys, name is Tyler aka Nanogenics and today I wanted to talk about Dokkan Battlefield, but not 2.0, 1.0, just because I thought it might be kind of cool to throw it back to the original mode that sort of made its way to being Dokkan Battle 2, but Dokkan Battlefield 2.0, and now, as Global is calling it, Virtual Dokkan Ultimate Clash. So, because that mode is launching finally on the Global side here on October 16th, uh, a lot of you guys have been asking about that. You can find it in the news as part of the sort of fighters campaign that's going on with the androids and all of that. Uh, I thought it might be kind of cool to do a throwback and talk about 1.0, especially since that came out in February of 2017. We got a very limited amount of, of hands-on time with it. They even... Bandai was actually super open about it. It was pretty much like, even in the news when the mode was announced and shown and all of that, it was like... This is, they either called it a beta or an alpha, but they were very upfront of like, this is something that we are testing. And when you played it, you sort of got an idea of like, yeah, this is definitely something that they are absolutely testing. Now, what you've been seeing on your screen and what you guys so will sometimes tweet at me and ask me about, yes, this was official. This was actually in the game. And I know it looks like something that is either a mod or something that was fake or whatever, especially if, if you're new. Because as I said, this came out in February of 2017. We've had over 100 million more downloads of this game. A ton of new people coming into the Dokkan Battle community since this actual released. Yes, this was officially a thing that we got to play. Now, it was super limited. I think it was only live for about like four or five days and we only got to do it three times a day. So if you hopped in and you failed, like that was one of your three times a day, you were done. Which let me tell you, happened to your boy Nano. And that it's that kinda that kinda sucked. I'm not gonna lie. It did it did really kinda suck. Now before we continue on talking, let's talk basics. I feel like it's definitely best uh before we move forward and start talking any more in depth about it for especially if you've never seen this before, to understand exactly what was going on here. So first up, a shout out to the Dokkan Battle wiki page. A link to it will be down below because this is actually where I found this image that we're looking at. Let's talk the sort of basics of what Battlefield 1.0 was doing. So as you can see there, uh, that sort of cleared 0 out of 7 across the screen, that was the unit you actually got cleared past the enemy's defensive line. Then as you can see there, there is an enemy defense line. That was a barrier that you had to send units over to actually attack deplete the health completely and you'd be able to go through it and as you can see there the red bar enemy defense line health uh was how much health it actually show you how much health that the, the defensive line sort of had that you had to sort of deplete to be able to get through then if you look over on the the left side of that you could see your own player's defense line and then in the blue was your actual health and the health bar of your own defensive line then you'll see card costs down there the cool thing about this is they would do one tenth of your card cost so if uh, a card was you know like 52 uh 52 costs or something like that then it would cost five in this game mode because you had your sort of energy bar there that would fill up all the way to 10 and so that way with 10 sort of energy you could play two five cost cards or a four and a six or you guys kind of get it either way take the overall cost of your card you know divide it by 10 and that was your card cost essentially for uh, hopping it into one of the three lanes, which I'll talk about in just a second. Then below that, you can see the 92 out of 100, that was the amount of cards you had left, because the thing that 1.0 and 2.0 shared is you would hop in with 100 cards. Then up next, you did have your three lanes, and pretty much the enemies you would fight were all sort of red ribbon army uh, enemies, and then they would eventually throw like this boss at you during this sort of phase of Battlefield, because there was still a sort of key fight phase as well. Uh, well, again, we're going to get that in just a moment, but there were, there were three lanes that you would basically place your own units into to fight off the Red Ribbon Army units or whatever enemies might be there, uh, and there was, there was definitely some strategy to it, which was very, very cool, but again, you only got to do it three times a day, so it was very hard to develop your own strategy before you had failed, used up all your times for the day, and then the game mode was just gone, but... That's neither here nor there. And at the time this actually launched, a lot of people were calling this like Dokkan Battle Clash Royale just because uh, the card cost reminded the people in the lanes, reminded people a lot of you placing out uh, units in Clash Royale because it does. It divides them all by 10. You have an energy bar of 10 that does replenish over time and you placing your cards out depletes your energy. And so it definitely felt very Clash Royale-esque if you've ever played that mode. But yes, you did have three lanes and your units spinning on their type had different sort of advantages. I'm grabbing this part straight from the wiki. So AGL type units, uh, they had a short charge time for deployment, high movement speed, and small attack increase when attacking the enemy barrier. So what it meant by short charge time for deployment is when you actually place them out on the field, they would hang out at your barrier for a moment before they would actually start flying across the battlefield over to the enemy defensive line. Then tech types had the ability to attack all enemies in a group. So you'd actually have groups of enemies sort of getting 
uh, stacked up on top of each other, especially if they were attacking your barrier. So it was cool when you threw out a tech type, they could actually inflict damage on all the enemies at one time. Uh, they also had a higher damage on the nearest enemy and then inflict less damage on enemies that are behind the frontmost enemy, which I mean, it makes sense, right? If they're attacking all of them, it makes sense that the closest enemy is going to take the most damage and the enemy from the farthest away is going to take the least amount. And intelligence type enemies raise the attack of in type characters in the same group and receives attack boost when attacking the enemy barrier. So it was kind of cool to send them over to do a bunch of damage quickly to uh, them and AGL types to do a bunch of damage to the barrier. If, if that was a strategy was to clear out maybe one lane and send a bunch of those style units to just try and get through before they would take out your enemy barrier, you could also try and do that as well. Uh, SCR types had uh, a attack boost as well as they did not have type of disadvantage whenever you were in there because type still did matter to some extent when you're facing off against these other enemies. And then physical types uh, had an HP boost and were basically just tanks in this game mode. So you would throw out a physical type unit and it would serve as a tank in this sort of portion of the Battlefield 1.0. And then the other thing that you would do, and I mentioned it just a little bit earlier with the other screenshot, is you could cycle through your units. So if there wasn't something on the screen that you thought you needed at the time, because it just, it grabbed them at random. Whereas when you hop into 2.0, you can select literally what you want out of all of them. It just gives you those units you see on your screen at random, and you have to click it to refresh the page and grab more of your different units to actually throw out. So that part of it was a little, a little, a little wild, but that was an aspect of it was having to rotate through your hundred units or however many units you had left at the time to actually select before you would throw them out into one of your lanes. So now that we've got sort of the basics of Battlefield 1.0 down, let's talk the actual goal. Like what was the point of it? What was so different about it from 2.0? Well, for one, 1.0 had 20 boss fights as opposed to 2.0's 10 boss fights, but 1.0 had checkpoints. And the reason for this is because when you were going across the screen with your units, they were fighting off the Red Ribbon Army units, you know, bosses, whatever it might be, trying to break down all that HP on that enemy defensive barrier. They could die. So you could actually lose them there before you even hopped into an actual boss fight. So uh, on the first one, if you didn't play your cards right, legitimately your cards right, figured, I guess figuratively and, and literally, um, you could lose like 10 units before you even take on the first boss fight, which the first one was Piccolo. So by the time you take on Piccolo, and if you use the units, obviously in the boss fight, you lose them is similar into Battlefield 2.0 as well. You're down like over 10 units for just one boss fight. And so there were checkpoints as you went along and it would allow you to either start completely over. So if it was too difficult for the cards that you had, you could start completely over, or you could continue from that checkpoint with your full 100 again. Now the difference between 1.0 and 2.0 also on that standpoint is you could take in Z ranked up rares. So essentially anything that was SR and above could hop in, but the sort the real drawback here with that, whereas with Battlefield 2.0, right, you have to have URs or LRs in case you weren't aware, a, a to hop into Battlefield 2.0, you have to be at least level 150 and the units that you're selecting have to at least be of UR rarity and higher. But the catch to the fact that you could bring SRs into the 1.0 mode was that SRs would have a lot less of a health pull, a lot less defense attack and all of that than the SSRs, URs, and LRs. So you were at it, if you had to bring in SRs or something like that, or even just SSRs, you were at a huge disadvantage when taking on these sort of actual side-scrolling portion of Battlefield 1.0 before you even hopped into the actual boss fights themselves, which again, you'd be at a huge disadvantage. So as far as that goes, I know that some people sort of miss that portion of it. it. It isn't too much of a drawback because even if you hopped in right now with SRs, I guess some of them maybe could help you from like a stun standpoint in Battlefield 2.0. They wouldn't be able to take hits in Battlefield 2.0. I mean, that mode hits ridiculously hard and they wouldn't probably be able to put out too much damage either. So it kind of makes sense. And even from the 1.0 standpoint, it kind of made sense because you had to survive. You had to get across the screen to even get into the boss fight. So as I said, the whole point of this was to get through, get so many units in. You could hop in with just even one that crossed the enemy barrier, but had to defeat the enemy barrier, take the HP all the way down. Once you did that, you then had to send units into it. The thing that we talked about before where you could see the zero out of seven, as you sent them through, that would fill up. And then once you had them filled up, you click the button and then you could actually hop in. You would select your units that you wanted to bring. And then you actually hop into the actual boss fight itself, similar at that point to what Battlefield 2.0 is. And then since once you got past the barrier and you were in the boss fights and there were certain boss fights, there, there was, even though it was a very limited time that it was around, there were people developing actual strategies to taking each of these on. And the final boss fight, since we're about to wrap up today's video, was against 
uh, a Team Gohan, the actual World Tournament Team Gohan, the tech one. Um, and it was a ton of fun. It was fun. But as someone who got to experience Battlefield 1.0, it was it ended up being more frustrating than anything else just because as i mentioned quite a bit earlier you can only do it three times a day so if you failed or you wanted to experiment with something um that you're pretty much giving up no matter what like one of your times a day and then you only got to try it two more times before it reset in 24 hours then you got to try it three more times a day and and even then it was only live for like at most a week so we just we didn't really get enough hands-on time with it to ever develop really really good strategies and ever to try all these different things out before it was gone so in my honest opinion as someone who actually got to play 1.0 hands-on and everything else it was more of a frustrating experience than it was a, a fun one so it looks cool like the gameplay you've been watching throughout this entire video and when people see screenshots of it and everything else like man why did they take this away i just think um maybe if they have refined it better but maybe they they it was gone for a year, right? Like Battlefield 2.0 did not come back until almost a full year of it not ever even being on the game at all. So it's very possible that they, they took it back into, you know, the testing stage with, you know, their internal development team and they decided there's just not any way that we can build this out to not make this a frustrating experience for the player base. So we're just going to scrap it. So do I think, do I think you'll ever see this ever again? No, probably not. Maybe, maybe like a 1% chance we see an iteration of it like later later on down the line maybe but I, I think they've already brought it back it's coming out on global it's already been out on jp for seven seasons now i think battlefield 2.0 is its successor and we will probably never see this gameplay in here ever again but it is always i mean anything's possible anything is absolutely possible but again as someone who actually got to experience it hands-on it was a very sort of frustrating experience but again if they would have made it to not be limited to just three times a day that might have changed my opinion on it but as someone who only got to do it three times a day just it, it was a it was a no-go sort of situation so anyways that was guys that was battlefield 1.0 that was my sort of experience with it and all those things if you have any questions feel free to let me know down below in the comment section if you're new to the channel you're not done so yet considering that subscribe button and joining the hashtag nano fam today consider subscribe the like button as well that has been today's video today's throwback to dunk on battlefield 1.0 all those things but guys have a great great day keep on keeping on nano jinx on off and i'll see you all in the next video